Welcome back. Till now, we have completed uh, four chapters uh, uh, semiconductor physics, uh, junctions, uh, basically PN junction, optoelectronic devices, and BJT. Now, we are moving towards the last topic, and that is field effect devices. In field effect devices, we are going to deal questions related with two important field effect devices. First uh, is a MOS capacitor, and the second one is a uh, MOSFET. So generally in gate questions are related from only these two topics. JFET is not in, in slavers of gate examination. From 2017 onwards, so JFET has been removed from the slavers of gate. So only MOSFET and in MOSFET, uh, only the enhancement type MOSFET is in our slavers. And uh, most important topic in this chapter is MOS capacitor. So let us begin with the MOS capacitor. Well, let us try to do a few variety of the problems so which are very frequently asked related with MOS capacitor. So I am taking the first question. We have a, a MOS capacitor where uh, we deposit HFO2 as gate dielectric whose relative dielectric constant is 25. So keep on writing whatever values are given to you. The relative constant of the oxide that is given to us epsilon R oxide that is 25 because question is lengthy so keep on writing everything whatever you get on a noble p type substrate so our substrate is p type substrate whose electron affinity is whose electron affinity is 4 electron volt so the electron affinity is 4 electron volt electron affinity of semiconductor is denoted by chi s so q chi s is equal to 4 electron volt this is given to us band gap of the semiconductor is also given that is 1.5 electron volt so eg is 1.5 electron volt moving towards the next question next uh, uh, point relative dielectric constant is 10 so this is relative dielectric constant of semiconductor intrinsic carrier concentration that is ni 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube and accepted concentration that is 10 to the power 18 per centimeter cube the gate is made of a metal whose work function is 5 electron volt so it is the work function of metal only so it is 5m which is given as 5 electron volt Gate oxide thickness that is T ox is 100 angstrom. T ox that is 100 angstrom. And that has a fixed oxide charge of 5 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per centimeter square. Fixed oxide charges are sometimes also known as trapped charges. So these are the trapped charges where Q is magnitude of electronic charge. The flat band voltage for this MOS capacitor is. So the first variety of question from this topic is a flat band voltage. I am not going to into the derivation of flat band voltage. I am going to write the relationship to what flat band voltage is. Actually, when you draw a band bending diagram for mass capacitor under thermal equilibrium, you get some kind of tilting in the oxide region. The tilting is showing that there is a built-in electric field across the oxide as well as across the oxide semiconductor interface region. So in order to remove that built-in electric field, in order to achieve flat band conditions, we apply certain voltage at the gate. So flat band voltage is defined as voltage applied at the gate terminal to achieve flat band condition. Flat band condition means there is no band bending. If there is no band bending, there is no electric field present in the device. So in order to achieve zero electric field means zero depletion charges, uh, we are applying flat band voltage. The flat band voltage is calculated like this. I am representing it VFB and this is given as phi ms if no trapped charges, no trapped charges but phi ms minus q ss dash upon c ox if q ss dash that is coulomb per centimeter square charges are trapped 
charges are trapped near the oxide semiconductor interface oxide semiconductor interface in the oxide You remember only this relationship because if QSS dash is 0, there is no trapped charges, then QSS dash is 0, and if it is 0, you will get this relationship. Phi ms is nothing but difference of metal and semiconductor work function. Phi ms is equal to phi m minus phi s. For an ideal mass capacitor, phi ms should be equal to 0. Basically, the Fermi levels of the metal and semiconductor should be at the same level. But in practically, we do not get such kind of material where we can get the Fermi level for semiconductor and metal same. So in practical materials, we will get certain difference into the work function of semiconductor as well as work function of the metal. Or in other words, the Fermi levels of the semiconductor and metal both are different. And if these are different, then phi ms will be non-zero. But if someone is saying that you are talking about ideal mass, I have seen one question in gate. He is saying that the ideal mass capacitor. So if ideal mass capacitor, then phi ms is equal to zero. Although in our case, it is not ideal. In our case, he has been giving in, uh, us uh, some value of the metal work function and some value of the semiconductor work function like that. Now you see. Here, actually, you see, Q phi m is known to us. That is phi, basically, I have written phi m. Phi is in bold, so it is Q phi m. So, basically, we are having phi m. Q, Q can be divided, it is phi bold. But we need phi s, then only we can calculate phi ms. So, how can we calculate phi s? Phi s is a work function for the semiconductor. You see, let us suppose this is our vacuum energy level, E vacuum, that is our reference energy level. We are having a P type semiconductor. So this is the conduction band of the semiconductor. This is the valence band of the semiconductor. This would be the intrinsic Fermi energy level. The difference between these vacuum and conduction band edge is known as electron affinity and this electron affinity for the semiconductor is given to us that value is 4 electron volt this value is 4 electron volt this is nothing but our band gap eg right and this eg is also given to us this value is given to us 1.5 electron volt that is eg 1.5 electron volt. It is a p-type semiconductor, so Fermi level would be somewhere here between EI and EF. The difference between Fermi level and vacuum level, this is known as work function. And this is our Q phi s. We want to calculate this Q phi s. How can we calculate? We first try to calculate this EI minus EF. EI minus EF. Once we calculate this, this value is nothing but EG by 2. Because intrinsic Fermi level is at the midway. So we can easily calculate Q phi S is equal to Q chi S, that is electron affinity, this plus EG by 2 plus EI minus EF. These two values are known to us, but EI minus EF is not known to us. How can we calculate EI minus EF? You see, we have some information regarding the p-type semiconductor. What is that information? Intrinsic carrier concentration is 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube. And acceptor concentration is uh, uh, 10 to the power 18 per centimeter cube. Nothing is mentioned about temperature, so we can assume that the device is operating at the room temperature. So we have one very important relationship. In a p-type semiconductor, p is equal to approximately acceptor concentration. And that is equal to Ni 
e to the power e i minus e f upon k t. From this relationship we can say that e i minus e f is equal to k t ln n a upon n i. So k t is 0 0.026 ln n a is 10 to the power 18 and n d is 10 to the power 12. Solve karein se, if you solve this ln 10 to the power 18 and this should be divided by 10 to the power 12 that is 10 to the power 6. So ln 10 to the power 6 multiplied by 0 0.026 that comes out 0 0.359, 359 electron volt. This is EI minus EF. Now we have calculated this value then we can calculate easy, easily Q phi S. Q phi S can be written as Q phi S is equal to Q chi S is 4 electron volt plus this E g by 2 that is 1.5 by 2 electron volt plus this value 0 0.359 electron volt. You please solve this point uh, 1.5 divided by 2 uh, plus uh, 0.359 plus 4 and that comes out as 5.109 5.109 electron volt this is q phi s we are not interested in electron volt we are interested in volt so phi s would be equal to this q q cancels so phi s is 5.109 volt now phi m is given in the question and phi s we have calculated. To calculate phi s whatever information was given to us we used that information and the basic definitions. The work function for a semiconductor is defined as the difference between the vacuum energy level and uh, Fermi energy level. And the electron affinity is defined as the difference between conduction band S and vacuum energy level. All these things you know we have done simple uh, use of the simple relationship. This is acceptor concentration or majority carrier concentration in a bulk P type semiconductor. By solving that we can calculate EI minus EF. Now if all these values are uh, known to us then from the band diagram we can calculate Q phi S and uh, Q phi S and phi S value we get. Now phi M is given in the question and that phi M value is 5, 5 volt. It is 5 electron volt, so if you write QQ cancel 5 volt. So phi ms, so phi ms is phi m minus phi s. Phi m is how much? 5 minus 5.109. So this phi ms comes out as minus 0 0.109 volt. But this is not our answer. Why? There are certain trapped charges also. How much trapped charges are there? He is saying that this much of the trapped charges are in the oxide. That has a fixed oxide charge. Fixed oxide charge means trapped oxide charges. So this is nothing but QSS dash. So we are having QSS dash 5 into 10 to the power 11. Q coulomb per centimeter square. Q SS dash 5 into 10 to the power 11 Q that is 5 into 10 to the power 11 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb per centimeter square. You please solve this it comes out as 5 into 10 to the power 11 10 to the power 11 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and that comes out 8 into 10 to the power minus 8 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb per centimeter square this is your qss dash once you have calculated qss dash let us try to calculate oxide capacitance oxide capacitance is c ox c ox is epsilon ox upon t ox epsilon ox is permittivity of oxide permittivity relative permittivity of oxide is given to us that is 25 and oxide thickness is 100 angstrom so 25 
इंटू एट पॉइंट एट फाइव फोर इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस फोर्टीन डिवाइडेड बाई हंड्रेड एंगेस्टम हंड्रेड इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस एट यू प्लीज सॉल्व दिस इट कम्स आउट एज ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू एट पॉइंट एट फाइव फोर इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस फोर्टीन एंड दिस शुड बी डिवाइडेड बाई हंड्रेड इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस एट एंड दैट कम्स आउट एज टू पॉइंट टू वन थ्री फाइव इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस सिक्स फायर पर सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर टू पॉइंट टू वन थ्री फाइव इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस सिक्स नाउ इफ दीज टू वैल्यूज आर नोन टू अस देन वी कैन ईजली कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ फ्लैट बैंड वोल्टेज फ्रॉम दिस रिलेशनशिप सो वी एफ वी इज सो फ्लैट बैंड वोल्टेज वी एफ वी इज फाइव एम एस माइनस क्यू एस एस डैश अपॉन सी ऑक्स so this comes out as 5 ms we have calculated that is minus 0.109 minus 0.109 minus q s s dash q s s dash is how much 8 into 10 to the power minus 8 8 into 10 to the power minus 8 divided by 2.2135 into 10 to the power minus 6 please solve this so it comes out as 8 into 10 to the power 8 into 10 to the power minus 8 divided by 2.2135 into 10 to the power minus 6 plus 0.109 and it is minus 0.145 volt. This is the value of flat band voltage. So, if this much voltage is applied, then we can say that uh, we can achieve flat band condition in the given uh, MOS capacitor. So, this option is given in minus point one four five. That is given in option B. So, right choice for this question is given by option B. You have to remember this formula. You would be frequently getting questions on this formula. Sometimes he used to uh, uh, ask what is the trapped charges. So if flat band voltage is given, these values are known, then you can easily calculate the trapped charges also. So whatever kind of the question is there, you can easily do it. If he is saying ideal MOS capacitor, that means phi m s is equal to zero, and in that ideal MOS capacitor, there should not be any kind of trapped charge also. So effectively, if it is ideal MOS capacitor, then flat band voltage should be equal to zero. We need not to apply any kind of uh, uh, gate voltage to achieve the flat band condition.